All right. Welcome to episode nine of Dow Talk. It is July 21st, 2022. This is your one-stop shop for everything Dallas. I'm Tommy. And I'm Frisian. Let's get into it. That sounded so uh, timid. Are you, you feeling good today? I'm feeling... I actually have been a little bit sick all week, but that is not going to stop me from getting my takes off. Just That's FYI. Right. That's right. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so we uh, showed this tweet last week, but I think, you know, this is the theme of this week's episode is anyone is launching and anyone can launch a DAO on Tally, and a lot of people are. It is hot DAO builder summer. If you haven't heard us talk about that yet, that's, we are not the ones that coined that, but um, I think it is true. I mean, a lot is really slow this week. Something we've been talking about all week is like, you know, I, was, I had Tuesday off and I came back and I was like, anything happened? And Frisian was like, absolutely nothing happened. Um, it's a pretty slow time in, in the DAO space in the crypto world, but that doesn't necessarily a bad thing, right? You know, it's, it's time to build and people are building and, we're going to talk about the, you know, the pros and the cons of things being slow. Um, but first let's start with the pros. So yeah, Frisian, you know, what's going on here. So we touched on a little bit last week, but let's dive a little bit deeper into, you know, what does this mean with all these DAOs being started on tally, whether they're, um, fully governing and on chain or just, you know, tokenless. Yeah. A few things. Number one. It's hot DAO builder summer, not hot DAO summer, which I think you included the builder part, but some people, <clears throat> Denison, have been calling it hot DAO summer. And I want to be clear, it's the builders who are hot. I mean, the DAOs are too, but I just we can't leave the builders out of this, first of all. Second of all, it's incredibly boring right now on crypto Twitter. As a full-blown crypto Twitter addict, I can tell you there's nothing happening. Big news this week included fake ZK EVM announcements. Like all the teams building ZK EVMs were like, big announcement coming, eyeballs, 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 rockets to the moon. And their announcement was like, we're working on a ZK EVM. And everyone was like, whoa, no shit, guys. That's crazy. And they were like, but it's not done yet. And everyone was like, we know. So that was fun. Um, and then the other thing was Elon sold all of his Bitcoin. Well, no, sorry. He sold Tesla, sold all their Bitcoin because Tesla is like, you know, um, struggling a little bit. Yeah. They, right they sold it to cover their profit, right? Or to cover their loss. Yeah. Like they theoretically, I mean, it's not yeah, confirmed, I guess, but I guess, I don't know how the accounting of all of that works, but that was the big news was like Elon sold Tesla's Bitcoin three months ago. So yeah, needless to say, incredibly boring. What do? What do? It's boring. What do? The well, answer is the only thing we can do is build our way out of it. And so at Tally, we're making it easier for anyone to build their way out of it, including a plebe like me. I don't I don't know how to write solidity, but you know what? I'm gonna start making DAOs. I'm very committed to this. And Tally, among others, is kind of enabling that behavior. So um this is a tweet from last week. We're seeing the typo again. Don't look at it. Um, but update, now hundreds of DAOs have launched on Tally. Um, I kind of think we should show what that looks like in terms of traffic to the page, but also like, I don't know if you want to live go through the flow, what we mean by creating a DAO on Tally. To be fair, um, Let's start we're with still the, building the out like the flow of fully what a DAO on Tally means. Um, but we can kind of show people like, yeah, what that what that experience looks like and kind of what we're building towards. Yeah, so this is, is the page we use for this page that we're talking about. Frisian, you want to give us yeah, a little well, bit basically, of a breakdown? On... So the background here is, for the longest time, Tally has been kind of at the end of the process of creating a DAO. So like we kind of got started by being the leading front-end slash like platform for the Open Zeppelin like Governor framework. Um, but there's so much that happens within the DAO creation process prior to actually um, creating a governor contract. And Tally hasn't been able to help with any of that until now. One of the things we've been talking about internally is like, if you look at DAOs and DAO tooling today, there's kind of, there's kind of like a decentralization or like robustness barbell, where on the one hand you have like people calling things DAOs that are just like a discord 
maybe a multi-sig, maybe a multi-sig with just one signer like Sifu. It's a multi-sig. I signed it myself. I thought about signing it and signed it. That's a multi, two transactions. Um, and so you have that. And then at the other end, you have like basically the folks who use Tally today, which would be like, um, you know, Uniswap or Gitcoin or ENS, where it's like very robust. You know, it's a fairly decentralized protocol um, where, you know, the actual decision making um, and things that affect the protocol or the treasury happen on chain through a formal vote. And there's not a lot of tooling um, for the middle of the barbell, kind of like that process of moving from like, I have an idea and some friends all the way to have like a robust decentralized DAO. Um, there's not a lot of tooling and there's definitely not a lot of tooling that helps you make the journey. So you kind of have to do it on your own, right? And you have to do it by like yourself gluing together a bunch of different tools um, that may or may not actually make sense uh, in terms of like being fully compatible down the road, security, stuff like that. And so that's what we're trying to do at Tally is kind of like help people through that journey um, with Tally as kind of like a place that all those different like tools that you're going to put into place uh, come together, like Gnosis Safe, Orca Pods, Governor, um, maybe even some future integrations for like cr- launching tokens and fundraising. And so this is like the very beginning of that journey. We just put like a button on the homepage that says start a DAO. Um, and we made it so you can at least create your DAO on Tally without already having a governor contract. And uh, a lot of people are doing it. Like hundreds of people are clicking this button um, to start a DAO. And it's because they want to start a DAO, you know, they want to build, they want to get us out of this boring bear market. And so um, that's super exciting to see. Um, what you'll see here is like, this is just the beginning on our end, right? We have a lot of work to do. Um, mission is like manifest hot DAO builder summer. <laughs> yeah, same thing, stream shit posting. You don't have MetaMask installed. Are you LARPing? <laughs> Do you work for a DAO tooling company, but you just don't even have a Web3 wallet? I, I don't have it installed on my like Tally browser, so let me pull up my other browser. Um, but uh, you, just, if you, you just keep your Web3, your DGen activity and Tally separate. Smart move. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> so so if you're listening to this, um, you go to tally.xyz, and there's, there's two main buttons, call to actions on the front page. There's a find a DAO which is your way to like kind of see what DAOs are active on Tally. You can see proposals, see what's passing, see what's going on. And then there's also <clears throat> start a DAO, which is what, what Frisian mentioned, right? We've Tally has been at the, you know, the end of the cycle and now we're starting to move towards the front of it and helping people create. So you go click on the button, start a DAO, you step one, enter the name of the DAO and you can always change it later, but just to get it going. Step two, you can write a little sentence about what it is. Step three, you log in with your MetaMask account, your, your Web3 wallet, and you preview it. And then essentially it just launches straight on Tally. Um, you don't have to have anything, any tokens, any governors, anything necessarily ready. You could add that after the fact. So it's just opening. Go for it. No, sorry. <laughs> you keep going. What gonna say? That. <laughs> I was just going to, I have so many things to say, too many things. First of all, if you showed us your non Tally browser, it'd probably be all those Tron NFTs. You know what I'm talking about? How they just cloned all the Ethereum. <laughs> it's yeah, like Tron yeah. Board Ape Club. You're just out here just minting Tron NFTs. Um, my, uh, my wallet will be not be shown on this podcast. I'm sure you <laughs> could find it if you really looked hard. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that's what we should do. We were talking last week about how we should do like a crypto fail episode where we all talk about all the things. You have to like do it live with your wallet. Like you can't just pretend about how badly you fucked up. It. <laughs> you have to it. like prove it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. No one, no one needs to know how much <laughs> own I bought, you know, but maybe they'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so, um, I, I really want to like get to the DAO page though, because I want to show like the next steps we need to do. I can, I don't know if it's like too late for me. Yeah, to you want to screen share? No, share. you can screen yeah, share. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and you can go ahead and pull it up. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. We're about to do this. Yeah, if you're listening, just head on over to tally.xyz whenever you have a chance. Um, if you're not familiar with the tool already, 
Um, we put a lot of time and the team at Tally puts a lot of time into, you know, making this, this product as usable and user-friendly as possible, whether it's, uh, whether you're just starting or whether you have something really epic that you want to migrate over to Tally. So we're building hot so, builders now. We manifest so yeah, the hot builder summer. Frisian's going through each step right now. And now he's at login. He's signing in with his MetaMask, which will pop up. Yeah. If you're watching, you won't see it. I'm going to switch to my not ledger wallet because no one needs to wait for me to sign a hardware wallet transaction. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. All right. We're previewing. Preview your DAO. DAO. We're going. There it is. Congratulations. Our DAO is created. Hundreds of people have done this in the last two weeks. So we have a DAO right now. It's just a page on Tally um, with metadata about the name of the DAO and why it exists. Um, so today, like right now, the only next step you can do from here is add a governor, um, which then like leads to the full functionality of Tally, right? You can uh, make proposals, on-chain proposals, you can make draft proposals, you can vote, you can, um, you know, delegate votes, etc. But this is like, you can think of this as the base that we're building towards where it's not adding governor is like one thing that you can do, and you probably will do, but maybe closer to the end of the pro 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 process. Maybe at this stage, what you're going to do is just add more like Web3 wallets, more users, more friends to the DAO. Maybe you want to launch a Discord from here. Maybe you want to create a Nosa safe and put the people that you've invited into your DAO as signers on the transactions. Maybe you want to create like a juice box treasury and launch it from here. Maybe from there, you want to create a governor with the NFTs that the people bought during the juice box treasury fundraising launch. So um, we have many of these pieces like either already built or in process internally. And you can kind of see how from this place, you can kind of go down that journey, incorporating, yeah, all the best tools uh, in the space for DAOs um, and making like a home that's very accessible um, to everyone and also helps builders make good decisions about like what tools they want to deploy and how they fit together for their DAO going forward. Yeah, something I love about Tally and, and you know, working with the team at Tally and talking with engineers and talking with people that are building the product is, you know, um, it's very community driven, right? We are, you know, kind of building as we go. And we've talked about this before. It's kind of like the secret sauce and there's pros and cons of it. Like we bias towards shipping a product and that sometimes means like, you know, there might be some bugs that, but we fix them very fast and we iterate really fast and we're constantly building and growing with, with our users. Right. And, um, I think this shows kind of like how something you mentioned earlier is like, we're bridging the gap between what are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. You should keep going. <laughs> no, I need to know. <laughs> Cause I can see you laughing. We can, we can revisit it later, possibly during the meme of the week section. <laughs> um, I think I know what it is. Okay. Let me re let me regroup. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I, I think this, this is like, it's bridging the gap. Like you said, between the on-chain and the off-chain stuff, right? There's all these tools, you know, discord snapshot on the, on the off-chain area. And then you have like governor and some token stuff on the, on the on-chain and uh, Tally is kind of taking all of those tools and giving you a centralized place where you can connect all of them instead of having to piecemeal everything together in a discord or, or in, you know, your own interface, right? Like we talk about like compound and some of these bigger compound in particular, like why isn't compound using tally? It says like they built their own interface, but I don't think, I think they're the exception and not the rule in, in regards to like how DAOs and big protocols are going to operate in the future. Um, people want simplicity and they want to know it's safe and easy. And I think, you know, oh, I know that's, you know, that's Tally's mission going forward. For sure, for sure. Um, so I think, I know I personally am looking forward to using this, um, <laughs> this tooling that Tally's building, because I'm going to become, I'm, I'm going to manifest hot DAO builder summer by being a hot DAO builder. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, more to come on that uh, over the rest for of sure. the summer. Yeah, so uh, moving on, we, we had some action from Nounsdow on Tally. We've talked about them a lot on, on previous um, episodes. And how are you live tweeting right now? 
you just don't so worry. Fr- so frigid. Nothing so to no, see no, no. here. The people, the people need, need to. This is not getting cut out. You need to turn off no teeth. You can't no, no, have no, no. no teeth with my Twitter account on. That right, will so make I you stupid. So I would say everyone who's listening to this should turn on no teeth for for frigid at zero x frigid f r i s s o n. And when you turn on no teeth, you can. He kind of exposes himself when we're in like Slack meetings or, or Google meets or now what I never thought would happen is on the podcast where I, <laughs> we're just talking right now and I get a notification, Frisian tweeted. And it's literally not even that like, it's not even like, it's a shit post. It's him responding to a picture of like Vitalik and it just says, hot. <laughs> well, it's not a shit post. Vitalik gave a speech at ECC <laughs> while wearing unisocks with his pants tucked into them. Like, also, look at this picture. It's just, it's fire. Like, I'm gonna pull it like, up. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, you gotta you gotta shit post your way out of the bear, too. Like, I'm. it's not just building. It's also shit posting. Come on. Look at that. That's, what a, guy, that's a giga what chat. Absolute, seriously. But anyway, I mean, come moving on. on. Like, honestly, the fit is fire. Like, it looks... It looks ridiculous, obviously, but it's also like everything comes together really nice. It's like uh, something I feel, you I feel like me? He's, he's transforming into a unique little model, you know. To go exactly. To the next level. Something like to touch on is like you always tell me this: like just be one hundred percent yourself. I don't think people really care what you do as long as you're like genuine about what you do. Like, it, yeah, and Vitalik's a great podcast example. Podcast partners of that. won't even get mad about you live shit posting during. during no, I don't care. I think it's funny. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. All right. So now it's Dow. They have their own interface and, and governance system, right? Um, so we, the, the cool thing about Tal is you can manually add DAOs, whether they use a platform or not. So you can, you can see what proposals they are, um, that are live, what have passed in, in the past, and you know what's going on with, with those DAOs. And this week we noticed that there was some traffic to the, to the announced DAO page on Tally, and we are trying to figure out who it is. So if you're listening to this or you know someone, um, who did that, you know, Frisian tweeted it, but no one responded to it. A bunch of likes and retweets, no replies. Um, we would love to know, but yeah. there's a little, if you're listening, there's a graph that just basically shows from like June, it was pretty level around like 50 page view traffic. And it just spiked very hard in the past week. Yeah. I had to cut off the numbers on the, the labels of the Y axis cause Twitter is annoying, but, uh, yeah, we're getting like last week we had several hundred people visit the nouns out page on Tally. And yeah, so like you can think of nouns as the canonical NFT DAO, um, in, in my view. And so like we recognize that at Tally pretty early on, and we basically like made a bunch of improvements to Tally to make it possible for nouns DAO to uh function and and to like for nouns DAO, you know, members to use Tally for governance. Um and we, we kind of like built that on our own because we knew we needed to support like that canonical kind of NFT DAO, NFT governance model. Um, but for a couple of months, no one announced DAO used it. Um, or at least basically no one. Like there's just no traffic to the DAO page on Tally. But yeah, apparently they're using it now. And I really want to know who. It's crazy. Like there's there's three DAOs we've done this with. Um, Uniswap, Compound, and Nouns. And just like, Basically, we built, you know, we, we need to make sure Tally worked with kind of these DAOs because they're, yeah, really important DAOs and ones that we want to make sure, like, Tally is feature complete to support. And Compound and Uniswap have been adopting us slowly over time. So, like, if you look at this graph over a longer time period for Compound and Uniswap, it's just, like, slowly up and to the right because they all have their own governance interfaces. But, like, Tally's, that's what we do full time, right? So, ultimately, it ends up, you know, having features and functionality that make it easier and more robust than um, what you'll find in the kind of self-maintained UI of um, of of like Compound and Uniswap. And so, hopefully, we're starting to see that process with Nouns out as well, which would be very exciting because I think NFTs are, in many ways, the future of governance. Um, yeah, you should actually. I know it's a little bit later in the agenda, but you should pull up that. Uh, David Phelps tweet about the advantages of NFTs for governance. It's farther down the dock, but it's probably like a natural segue. Um, I think there's, we've talked about this some um, last week with Denison. I think there's a lot of good reasons that NFTs would be like the default for governance tokens. Um, one uh, 
one set of reasons is just around the fact that like you can uniquely identify them. So if you're a DAO and you want to be able to di like differentiate between DAO contributors or participants in governance, you want to know who has the most reputation, who has participated in, you know, uh, other activities like NFTs are naturally uh, suitable for like attaching like metadata or just context about the holder. Um, they are possible to make soul bound if you want to go that route. Um, and so anyway, I think, I think like now it's now kind of the OG, um, but we're going to see more and more NFT DAOs come up. And I think we're actually going to see NFTs kind of end up being the default token standard for governance tokens over time going forward. Yeah, I love this. Wait, did the tweet not pull up for uh Yeah, I don't think it switched. Oh, if you pulled it up on a different tab, you have to change tab. Let me see. Let me see. All right, so we got this uh, tweet from David Phelps. I'm going to read it. People are listening. Can you see it now? Oh, yeah. Lay it on. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll lay it on you. All right, here we go. NFTs are just ERC-20s with individual metadata, making it easy to track when they've been used for voting, how they've been used in the past, how long they've been held, how often they've transacted, and then the likelihood that they are used for civil attacks, all key for voting power. And this is a quote tweet from a, from a tweet from czar.eth. Loose thought, if voting was NFT-based, you could tick off the token IDs that voted and eliminate the contest snapshot. Um, you, I know you just talked about it a little bit, but uh, give us like a brief, like a philosophical take on you know what David's tweeting about and what's our you know instigated with this tweet. Yeah, it just allows you to attach like context or to understand context about the token itself, um, which is kind of interesting. Like, if you make the NFT soul bound, then it also gives you context about the wallet address and theoretically person who's behind it even if you don't though that gives you like an additional option right so even if the nft has been moved between wallets you can have context about the nft and then you can also have context about the wallet that holds it and potentially kind of put those things together so it just i mean taking a step back and like stripping out all the web3 lingo like the token is unique you're creating a democratic, you know, uh, voting system of some kind, like, wouldn't you want, you know, the token that represents the vote to be unique, right? Because hopefully like the person, person, the people and yeah, the, the people who are voting in, in the system are unique as well. Right. So I think it's just like a better fit for, for governance than a fungible token on really every level. Or most levels, maybe not every yeah. level. Um, they're harder to they're harder to financialize. Like, but that's also probably good <laughs> for voting. No, that is, so. is a good thing, right? Yeah. yeah, I think it solves you know a lot of the problems of of like token based. I mean, like fungible token based, you know, governance models. Um, I think like general, like big picture here, it's like something we talk about all, all the time. Is like everything's moving really slowly, but also like everything and all these decisions and, and things that are being pushed forward are like super, super important. And I think we're going to look back in two or three years and be like, Oh, remember when we thought it was like super slow, like that was arguably one of the more most important times in terms of building the foundation for where, in my opinion, DAOs will be super, super successful and thriving and eating the world, you know? Um, so I think it, it's like something I've, been pretty intentional about right now is like, even though it is slow, like try, trying to take like a step back and thinking a little bit deeper about like what is actually happening. Um, who are the thought leaders? Who are the people that are funding um, DAOs? What DAOs are getting funded? And then what is actually, you know, happening in the space. And it's kind of been um, like a, a natural extension of, of my work and trying to, you know, I would say like where our work is like communicating the mission of DAOs and, and, making the space bigger. So it's been a, a big part of that has been trying to, 
communicate what is actually happening, you know, taking the data we have behind the scenes and understanding that, hey, the, the DAO space is super, super, you know, the outlook super positive. Like a lot is getting built, but on the outside, like not really a lot of people can see that, whether you're in the Web3 space or not, right? Um, so kind of a segue into what we're going to talk about next is, you know, funding in DAOs and what is the best way to get funded? You know, what is the status of funding in the DAO space and, you know, what that means for work, for the decentralization of labor and, and being able to work on projects when you want to work on them and allowing projects that, you know, go from idea to funding and, you know, sometimes in a matter of minutes or hours, um, it's, a, it's a really important role or really important part of um, building this entire ecosystem. So we'll start with another tweet from, from David. Uh, David Phelps at Divine underscore economy uh, talking about Joe Tao getting funded, which was, if, if you've listened to this, you know what Joe Tao is, but his tweet was Polygon Village literally stepped in and saved Joe Tao while we got grants from five other projects to carry us through the year. We probably wouldn't be here without them, and I couldn't be more excited about this. And uh, something else David talks about is like, and you kind of made a meme about it this week, Tyler, is like, they haven't really taken, they haven't taken any VC funding. It's all been backed by, you know, grants from um, projects and protocols in the space. And I think that's really important in regards to how that guides decision-making within the project and, 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 you know, how incentives are aligned. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so look, sometimes it can be hard for DAOs to raise venture capital but sometimes as a DAO, you just don't want to raise venture capital. Um, we were just talking about nouns. You know, um, I think a lot of the magic there is that it's a decentralized community of creators with shared ownership over the treasury and the IP, which that you know is open to everyone. And like, I don't know, it might mess with the vibes a little bit if they did if they were like did a board ape yacht club style equity race like board api club did with a16z and it definitely messes up the future financial incentives with regard to tokens like if you're a dow and you have a token but you also raised equity um like in you know as a u.s based corporation and the equity holders have some kind of like claim to the token or future token which they probably do fundamentally at least in the united states those equity holders are going to be senior to the token holders like they're going to you know they have rights that as a random token holder with no equity you don't have and that can be problematic it can also be okay but it's just like something to understand right um and so on both sides like maybe it's hard to raise equity as a DAO, but also maybe you don't want, like having equity is not necessarily congruent with like your vision. Um, and so like, I think what we want to emphasize here is there's like a lot of other ways that you can get funding. And I think the way Joe Dow and David went about it is really cool. They raised from a bunch of other Web3 projects and protocols. Um, they raised like a million bucks or some things just to like get them through the MVP phase. And I think that gives them like allies and partners. And as a participant in Joke DAO, it gives you better clarity on like, you know, what the incentives are around the project. I know I, as a governance NFT holder of Joke DAO, feel good that I have, you know, the same rights as everybody else. Um, oh, you had to sneak that in? You had to sneak that in, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Can we, can we talk about this for a second? Can, I, we're not going to let that yeah. go. So, yeah. uh, Frigian last week, what happened? <laughs> What'd you buy? Wait, what? <laughs> Are you talking about the joke dog governance NFT? Uh, yes, I'm talking about the joke dog governance oh, NFT. That was that was two weeks ago. <laughs> that was two weeks ago? <laughs> yeah. That was last yeah. week. I'm a governor. Look, so I, yeah, got, Frigian, I, I got a I I got a joke dog governance NFT for one E. There's another Italian employee that has a joke dog governance NFT. It's not to be revealed who it is though. Just do know we know who it exist. is? I know who it is. <sighs> But see, I don't even know. Who it is. Few, few know. And look, it's just the beginning. But like, maybe we'll have a chance to collude 
on good joke dot governance. No, in all seriousness, like I think it's really exciting. Like I think it's super important. Tally, we kind of talked about how Tally will be this, um, you know, place where builders can come and plug into all the best in class DAO tooling um, or yeah. like primitives uh, and protocols for them to use for their DAO. And so I think it's really important as uh, contributors to Tally that we're like tapped into the most exciting, most innovative stuff happening in the space from a DAO tooling perspective. Joke DAO probably like is very early, right? So we're probably not going to integrate it into Tally like tomorrow, but um, it's very innovative. And so, yeah, I think it's super good for for us to like, yeah, be tapped in there for sure. So that's why I own a governance NFT. hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's like one of the best ways. I mean, I've always, I was taught this from the beginning and that's what I tell people too, is like, if you want to get involved or learn about something in the space, whether it be NFTs, tokens, trading, whatever, just don't read about it. Don't try to ask. I mean, you can read and ask people questions about it, but the best way to learn about it is to do it. And something I've noticed from you is like, that's how you, you do, that's how you operate. And that's how I've kind of started to implement certain things that I've learned from you into my life is like, oh, like you want to learn about DAOs and you want to do shit, build a DAO or join a DAO, you know, become part of like, you, you were obsessed with joke race for the longest or uh, joke that for the longest time. And you just said, fuck it and bought one. And, uh, it just opens up a lot more opportunities to, you know, learn and, and contribute. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so there's so much you can learn along the way, right? Like I'm trying to figure in trying to actually join the governance of Joe Dow, I had to figure out how to use guild and I found a bug in their platform that I like helped them fix. I didn't write any code. I just like gave them the feedback. Um, so yeah, it's like just being in the mix and contributing to, to the space is key. Um, yeah. So like Joe Dow raised from other web three organizations there's so many ways to do this. Like this is a new uh, product that somebody just built, um, DeFi Girl XO uh, And it's a, it's like a curated list of all the grants in the space. So this is for like individual builders, you know, what are all the grants out there that you can use to get funding? It's called grantr.app, G-A-R-N-T-R dot app. Um, so yeah, just more sources of, of funding if you want to build something cool. Yeah, that's a great way. Like if, if for the individual, if you want to go look for, for grants, go, go, go to grantor.app and, and there's a couple other resources as well. Um, something we've talked about before and something in the same vein as that, which is like, you know, kind of the, the like de-verticalizing nature of, of getting funded is, is Juicebox. And we, we actually have an interview with, with one of the founders of Juicebox coming out relatively soon. Um, to uh, Frisian sat down with him. Django, Django, Django the boss. Great yeah. conversation. Yeah, like maybe instead of, you know, maybe another source of funding is you raise a treasury directly directly from the community, um, people who want to be a part of your project. And um, you don't have to like do all that on your own anymore. Um, Juicebox is like an amazing primitive for, you know, sourcing the funds for creating and creating a DAO treasury. Um, and you don't even have to learn about how it works on your own anymore. Uh, Bankless, William Peaster, who does a lot of the NFT stuff for Bankless, came out with like a super deep uh, exploration of Juicebox and how you can use it to bootstrap your own crypto project. So more more options coming soon. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about, you know, we, we talked about pretty much everything in regards to funding. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you know, we've kind of talked about the alternatives to venture capital or, you know, traditional, you know, investments, but, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just about having the right people on your cap table for the right amount of money and making sure, you know, you're, you're doing it for the right reasons. Don't just raise from people to raise from people. Um, and for I know you have a lot of hot takes on this, so I'd love to, to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Don't hold back, well, please. This is the other thing. First of all, it's dope that TCG is investing in DAOs. Like it's an and not an or, right? Like all sources of funding are good. As a builder, you should, you know, choose the ones that are available to you or you think are the best fit for the future of your community. Um, so yeah, um, TCG and offline invested in this like really cool uh, up and coming 
DAO um, called Archive, and it's supposed to be a decentralized physical museum. Um, but to me, this has like strong heritage with the Constitution DAO project. I have no idea if the team was involved in that, but it's like, you know, Constitution DAO was like spun up out of thin air real quick. Let's raise $40 million, try to buy the Constitution. It didn't work. But like, as we were going through that process, it was like, wait, Okay, so if this does work and we win, like, how do we manage it? How do we have the community involved in, like, what we're doing with the Constitution going forward? Um, Pleaser DAO has also, like, explored these questions when they bought the Wu-Tang Clan album. Um, it's like, okay, we bought this Wu-Tang, like, the one copy of the Wu-Tang Clan album um, from, like, the Martin Screlly, like, confiscation auction. <laughs> it is, like, um, but how, what do we do with it now? Right. Um, I think, yeah, to me, this project archive really like gets at some of those questions. Like how do we create this curated community, curated physical, you know, collection IRL uh, space. Um, so I'd love to see this. Like I love to see every DAO um, that launches. That's, that's well-intentioned um, and super interesting and cool to see VCs like, it, you know, or just pools of capital in the space interested in funding stuff like that. For sure, for sure. Exciting times, for sure. All right, last little bit. Uh, nice uh, Medium article from Faces of ETH. If you haven't heard of them, go follow them on Twitter. Great follow for everything in the, in the Ethereum space. Virgin, you, you, I know you love this article. You posted about it earlier this week, and you added it to the docket for today. So give us a little bit of a breakdown. Yeah, Faces is a friend of Tally. Um, super talented person who's done like product work for us. Um, he was a creator. He is a creator in Dope Wars, which is a decentralized like community video game cent cent centered around hip hop culture. And um, yeah, it's it's like a uh, super interesting project. Uh, they they run on Tally, and um, he's just talking about what that experience has been like, right, from the start to where it is now. Um, there's definitely some challenges in the mix. Like he talks about how. Um, you know, at the, at, at the start, it was like a hundred percent focused on creation, but as you know, the size of the DAO grew, the treasury grew, you kind of end up with people in the mix who aren't as focused on creation and are more like into the politics of it all. Um, which I don't think he was super stoked about. Um, he talked about how like it reminded him of working in bigger you know, bigger companies, um, which I know I personally like, that's a big part of why I'm in web three. And I work for Tally is like, I have had, I have experience working in larger companies and like don't love the politics and want to stay focused on building and creating. Um, but so, so he talks about some of the challenges there, but it's also like a hopeful message for where we can, yeah, move forward in the, in the DAO space. Um, I've seen a lot of memes actually about this topic of like, um, maybe like politics or like um, uh, non-builders, I guess, or like bureaucracy um, capturing or attempting to capture DAOs. I can show you actually like another, I, I just saw a tweet from Peter Pan um, that, that covers this. Um, yeah, show it, pull it up. I'll, I'll switch, switch here. So uh, it's from Peter Pan. He's like, a legendary DAO person, investor one KX, investor in Tally. It's 2022. Welcome to DAOs, and it's the Trojan horse meme where like DAOs are inside. There's decentralization on the outside of the Trojan horse, and in the middle is mid-level bureaucrats. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of stuff like this. This is like very similar to like one of the points that Faces is making in his article. Um, so I think like um, I don't know. Like it's a challenge, but it's also a sign that DAOs are growing up. Like this would not be happening if DAOs weren't scaling. So then the question becomes like, how do we keep DAOs lean, keep DAOs focused on decentralization, keep DAOs enabling builders uh, going forward and super excited to help, you know, figure that out. Yeah. With, with everybody else in the community. All right. Let's, let's finish up meme of the week. This goes hand in hand with what we talked about earlier. And I've never seen Frisian, get so fired up about something in my life. Dude, my that's some BS. I've been way more fired up than I am about all the well, fake ZKVM. Well, I mean, I, I can't remember much 
of like, you know, last night at like 1 a.m. I'm laying in bed, just like deliriously tired. And uh, maybe that's why I thought it was funny. But Frigid this fucking sends out a tweet about, he's been talking about it all day, about the ZK, like, announce fake announcement announcements like hey we're announcing that we're announcing that we announced uh that we're building something but you know it's not going to be out for three years so this yeah. this, this <laughs> meme is the announce war if you if you can't if you're listening it's linked in the spotify or apple show notes we'll take a look at it i feel like reading off a meme trying to yeah. describe it is <laughs> it's the it, announce it or the, yeah oh uh, have you heard the breaking news can you believe this breaking news uh, yeah this also reminds me of those like um i'm gonna say some some kind of mean things again right now so there's all these like news accounts in crypto that just look for breaking news and then like create their own version of it um and they often get like tricked with copy pasta so like there's like I don't know, like crypto whale alerts. A lot of them have whale in their name. There's like Bitcoin something, something, something like at Blockworks is really bad about this. Uh, sorry, sorry to pick on them, but they just like retweet super untrue and also completely uninteresting things on a very regular basis. So don't, don't be that person. Don't be the announcer. Um, yeah. <laughs> also yeah, as a project, just, like yeah. announce it, when you're done building, it's a lot more exciting that way. I mean, we, I was kind of talking about that earlier. Why I think Tally is exactly the opposite of that, right? I think that's what you were laughing at earlier when we were talking about like shipping, you know, like, yeah, I we mean, really announced 90% of the shit that we ship, which is what kind of why me and Tyler are here now, or me and Frisian are here, God. Um, <laughs> like, because there's so much cool shit being built and pushed out, and sometimes, you know, um, yeah, I mean, we like, on the one on one hand i'm okay with it like we we said we created a tool for starting a dao the, the where the solution isn't completely built end to end we talked earlier about how we need to add more tooling to the mix so people can go on that path from like starting the dao to having a very robust decentralized organization um so there's more to do there and i'm totally cool with folks like uh announcing the progress or like sharing progress that they've made. I just, I just think it's really funny when like, yeah, I guess not only do like, does one organization make a huge deal out of it, but then like everyone else building competes to make non announcements. I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I agree. Well, if that's it, pretty good episode for a slow week. So here we are. We're never going anywhere. We'll be here as, as long as there's at least one DAO out there. Yeah. If there's <laughs> one thing you can count on, it's DAO talk. We're not going to stop making episodes. We're not going to rug the community. We're just going to keep building. Um, and uh, yeah, same for Tally. So yeah. appreciate y'all listening. If you've made it this far, Check. thank you. Make sure to um, follow, follow us on Twitter. Stay up to the with any product announcements. Go use that start a DAO feature on tally.xyz. We have the, the DAO contact guild in the works uh, very soon, which will be out. Not to uh, do a pre-announcement announcement, but that is coming. Um, and <laughs> Soon TM. Soon, soon TM. Within 100 days, we will have yes. built a DAO. Um, and then Frigion will be gone next week, so we will have a special co-host. Stay tuned for that. Oh, if you were no. Actually Am I getting fired? I'm going to come back <laughs> and like the calendar event's going to be gone. For yeah, Joe, recording he's gonna come time. back. He's gonna be. Uh, he's gonna be deleted from all of the Slack and multi sigs and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. But otherwise, we will see you next week. Virgin, we'll see you in two weeks. Enjoy your time off. See you next time. Thanks, Tommy. Peace. Peace.